Welcome to GameCube Week Part 2, video number 3. In the last two videos, we took a look at the best GameCube co-op games. We took a look at the worst GameCube co-op games. Links to those in the description down below in case you missed them. In today's video, video number 3, we're going to take a look at several GameCube co-op games that I feel like are hidden gems that you should be playing with some friends or family members. So let's go ahead and jump right in. Now before we get into the video, I just have a few quick disclaimers for you. First disclaimer is the only co-op games that I'm going to be talking about in these videos are co-op games where you can play through the entire campaign fully cooperative. We're not going to be talking about games where it has a separate co-op mode that's not a campaign like games like Defender. We're also not going to be talking about games where you can only play co-op during battle like Tales of Symphonia and The Lord of the Rings The Third Age. Now I'm pretty sure that I'm going to be covering every major North American GameCube co-op game that meets that criteria, but as you watch through these videos when you finish all four of them, be sure and let me know in the comments down below if I missed any. Now another disclaimer is unfortunately me and my editor, we only had limited amount of time that we could spend playing these games and recording the footage. So you're only going to be seeing the first 30 minutes or so of each game. In addition to that, you're not going to be seeing any three or four player footage for any games that can go all co-op for three to four players. We were only able to do two player co-op. And with those disclaimers out of the way, let's get into the first game on today's video. The first hidden gem that I want to talk about is Batman Rise of Sinzu. Batman Rise of Sinzu was published and developed by Ubisoft and the GameCube version released on November 11th, 2003. It is a beat em up game where you take on the role of Batman, Batgirl, Robin, or Nightwing and each character has their own moves, combos, and upgrades. After each level you will have experience points that you can use to unlock even more special moves and combos to add further variety to the combat. In standard beat em up fashion you will be punching, kicking, throwing, dodging, and blocking a multitude of enemies in the Batman universe as you save civilians and go after the villains. When you first start playing, it feels a little basic at first, but the further you get into the game, the more it will start to grow on you and become more enjoyable, especially if you're a Batman fan. The GameCube version features two-player co-op where each of you get to choose which character you want to play as, and of course playing this game co-op is far more enjoyable as you can assist each other and work together as a team. If you are a fan of Batman and or a fan of beat em up games and you are looking for a very fun hidden gem co-op game on the GameCube, then I highly recommend Batman Rise of Sinzu. The next two hidden gems on today's list are Conflict Desert Storm and Conflict Desert Storm 2 Back to Baghdad. The GameCube version of Conflict Desert Storm released on April 22nd, 2003 and the GameCube version of Conflict Desert Storm 2 Back to Baghdad released on January 6, 2004 and both games were published by Gotham Games and developed by Pivotal Games. Both games are squad based tactical third person shooters where you go on a variety of military based missions, perform several different objectives and you have to play very carefully and strategically. In most missions you command a squad of four and each squad member has their own specialty such as sniper rifles, machine guns, demolitions, and you can command them and swap between them. You can play co-op with two to four players in both games and I found playing these games cooperatively to be a lot of fun as you have to really work together, plan out your attack, and play very tactically in order to survive. Now I will say this, the games are not perfect, they both have issues, the primary issue being the controls are a bit rough and stiff, but once you get used to them it's not that bad and it does not take away from the enjoyment of the games. To me, when I play these two games, they really give me the feeling of playing a true military tactical game where you have to play very carefully, and that is what I look for in these types of games. I want them to make me feel like I've accomplished something by playing smart rather than just running and gunning, and I feel like both games accomplish this feeling. And of course, playing them cooperatively is incredibly enjoyable because of the fact that you and your teammates have to rely on each other so much in order to survive and complete the missions. So if you are a fan of third person shooters or squad based tactical shooters and you're looking for a couple of fun hidden gems to play co-op with friends or family members, then I highly recommend checking out both Conflict Desert Storm games on the GameCube. Next hidden gem is one you may not expect and that is 
Over the Hedge. Over the Hedge was released on the GameCube on May 9th, 2006, and it was published by Activision and developed by Edge of Reality. Over the Hedge is a 3D platformer of sorts that is based on the popular DreamWorks movie. Over the Hedge features linear 3D stages with platforming gameplay and mini games as well, and in most stages you're searching through homes looking for different luxury items as you control various characters from the movie. And the controls are fairly basic, you have a melee attack, a ranged attack, you can double jump, you can pick up objects and throw them, there are several weapons you can pick up, so on and so forth. But the cool thing is that you can play through the entire game cooperatively with a second player and it is drop in drop out co-op. Now I know what you're thinking, you're probably thinking why would a licensed movie game that looks like a kid's game be fun, but surprisingly the game is pretty damn fun and polished as well. There's a large variety in the gameplay and a lot of different gameplay mechanics that come up and it's enjoyable to play, the controls are smooth, the game looks good, it has a good presentation and it's pretty fun playing in co-op. You will play in several locations from the movie, you also have a home base where you store your treasure, and you can switch between four different characters to add further variety. I was going into this game expecting it to be average at best, and I was pleasantly surprised when I realized it's not a bad game. It's pretty damn fun, and I could actually see myself playing through it cooperatively all the way and enjoying it, so if you're a fan of the movie and or a fan of 3D action platformer style games, then check out Over the Hedge. It's probably pretty cheap as well. Next hidden gym co-op game I want to talk about is an awesome game and that is Gauntlet Dark Legacy. The GameCube version of Gauntlet Dark Legacy was released on March 6, 2002 and it was published and developed by Midway Games. Gauntlet Dark Legacy is a dungeon crawling action game and it is the sixth game in the Gauntlet series and it builds off the last game before it which was Gauntlet Legends and adds new levels, new character classes, secret characters and more. You will be playing in large sprawling levels full of hordes of enemies and treasures to find as you use slow attacks, quick attacks, combos, and very special abilities to dispatch the variety of foes. Gameplay is very traditional but with some modern conveniences thrown in from that era but it still follows the traditional gauntlet gameplay loop which is fine because it's still fun to this day. Now you can play through Gauntlet Dark Legacy single player but where's the fun in that when you can play cooperatively with up to four players and that's the way gauntlet games are meant to be played with a full roster of four players it's so much fun one of my favorite things to do in the game is to pull off one of the many co-op team moves which are oftentimes really over the top and a lot of fun and all you have to do is be standing next to each other and perform a turbo attack together and these team attacks are a great way to clear out hordes of enemies if you are a fan of the gauntlet series or a fan of dungeon crawling action rpgs in general and you're looking for an awesome co-op game you can play with up to four players then gauntlet dark legacy will be right up your alley but be warned it's pretty rare and expensive game on the gamecube the next hidden gem co-op game while it is from a very popular movie series this is a co-op game i don't ever hear anybody talk about and that is harry potter and the goblet of fire Harry Potter and the Goblet of Fire was released on the GameCube on November 8, 2005, and it was both published and developed by EA. Harry Potter and the Goblet of Fire is of course based on the movie based on the book, and it is a 3D action adventure where you play through a variety of linear levels across the story unlike previous games that were more of a free roaming action adventure. You will be playing as Harry Potter, Ron Weasley, and Hermione, and the game can be played cooperatively with up to three players, and it's a pretty fun co-op game where you actually do have to work together. You will be performing a variety of objectives throughout the levels and using several different magical spells to fight enemies and solve puzzles and oftentimes you have to combine your spell together with another players to create a more powerful version of that spell to use during the levels. Graphics are good, the presentation is good, and it is a fairly fun game and relatively challenging as well, although sometimes it's challenging in a cheap way. The controls do take a little bit to get used to, but once you get used to them, they're not too bad and the magical gameplay mechanics are pretty creative and original at times. Harry Potter and the Goblet of Fire is certainly not a perfect game, it does have its fair share of issues, but we were having fun playing it and at the end of the day for me, as long as the game is fun to play despite the issues, I will be happy. So if you are a fan of Harry Potter and or action adventure games and you're looking for another fun co-op game to play on the GameCube, I recommend checking out Harry Potter and the Goblet of Fire. The next hidden gem was a surprise to me because I didn't see it coming and that is TAC 3 The Great Juju Challenge. TAC 3 The Great Juju Challenge was released on the Nintendo GameCube on September 19th, 2005, and it was published by THQ and developed by Avalanche Software. 
Tac 3 The Great Juju Challenge is a 3D action platformer where you play as Tac and Loke as you navigate through different challenges. In Tac 3, you will navigate a variety of levels, some of which are obstacle courses with a time limit requiring you to reach the exit as quickly as possible while collecting items and defeating enemies and platforming, of course, as well. While playing single player, you will take control of either Tac or Loke as you swap between them and use their different special abilities and moves. Each of the two characters has their own unique moves, strengths, weaknesses, and special abilities requiring you to use the right character at the right time. And the great thing is you can play through the entire game in split screen co-op with a second player with one of you taking control of Tac and one of you taking control of Loke. And it is a really fun game to play cooperatively because you really have to work together as there are certain team based moves for you to pull off to navigate the environment. There's a pretty wide variety of gameplay mechanics, enemies to deal with, obstacles to overcome, and platforming challenges to bypass which helped keep the game from being repetitive and keep things exciting. I feel like this is one of those games that you would see on a shelf and just completely pass it thinking it's probably not very good but it's a surprisingly fun game. I really enjoyed what we played of it and I definitely plan on playing it again in the future and trying to beat it. So if you are a fan of 3D platformers with more of a linear feel to them and you're looking for a fun two-player co-op game to play through, then don't pass up Tac 3 The Great Juju Challenge because it's a pretty damn solid game. And the final hidden gem co-op game that I want to talk to you all about is The Incredibles Rise of the Underminer. The Incredibles Rise of the Underminer was released on the Nintendo GameCube on November 1st, 2005 and it was published by THQ and developed by Heavy Iron Studios. It is an action-adventure game that takes place immediately after the first movie and it featured a brand new story. It's sort of an alternate sequel in a way because it's now considered non-canon because of the 2018 sequel movie. While playing the game single player, you alternate between controlling Mr. Incredible and Frozone as you fight the legion of robots from the Underminer. If you play the game co-op, one player controls Mr. Incredible and the other player controls Frozone. Mr. Incredible and Frozone each have their own strengths and weaknesses, moves, and special abilities. For example, Mr. Incredible can pick up and throw objects as well as do a ground pound, and Frozone can shoot a freeze ray to freeze enemies and objects, and he can use an ice glide move. Each character can be upgraded between between missions depending on the experience points that you receive allowing you to upgrade your health and super move and your special abilities. The Incredibles Rise of the Underminer is certainly not a complex game. The controls are pretty simple. The game is very straightforward but oddly enough we found ourselves having a lot of fun playing co-op. The game wasn't incredibly challenging but we were still having fun and we wanted to keep playing but unfortunately we had to stop and play other games. There are some decent production values here as well and the game is smooth, the controls are good and the special moves are pretty fun and interesting interesting. It may not be the best co-op game in the world, but I certainly consider it a hidden gem because I found it to be pretty fun and I never hear anybody talk about it. So if you are a fan of The Incredibles or a fan of action platformers like this and you are looking for an enjoyable co-op game to play with another player, then consider checking out The Incredibles Rise of the Underminer. Alright everybody, those are the games that I personally feel like are GameCube co-op hidden gems that you should be checking out and playing with some friends and family members. If you enjoyed this video, hit that like button. Let me know in the comments down below what you think about some of the games I've talked about in today's video. If you've played them co-op, let me know that in the comments down below. Also, let me know in the comments down below if there are any other GameCube co-op hidden gems that I should have talked about in today's video. As always, if you're new here, consider subscribing so that you can join the Retro Wolf family. And folks, stay safe out there, keep playing games and having a good time, and I'll catch you all in the next video. Later.